Today, I'm at Sam Houston State University with Chris, a meat eater who has concerns about veganism. We talk about culture, ethics, and whether or not farmed animals are treated like celebrities. I want to make it clear that I want this to be a collaborative conversation. I don't want to get into debates where either one of us is trying to be right. I just want to understand your perspective and make the case for animal rights. So what is what are your first thoughts on that statement. I think I don't have like any problems with vegans at all. Yeah. Uh, I think they're pretty cool people. They come from their views. I kind of get it. Like, you know, animals are important. You know, they're an important part of our environment and stuff. So would you say you're pro animal in favor of, of animal rights? Uh, I can't lie. Uh, I want to say that because like I do eat meat. Uh, it's just that, you know, from like when I was like growing up, I ate, ate like, you know, a good respectable amount of like meat. I guess just to keep like a balanced diet, because like, I play like a lot of sports too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah. So maybe we could kind of explore like that. It, it sounds like you do agree that animals are important. Do you think what happens to them in the meat and dairy industry is that a moral concern? Uh, I guess so. I really, yeah, I would say so. Why? Because you know, like now thinking about it, like I've seen like some videos too. Of like a slaughterhouse, it's kind of humane. It's kind of sad. I mean, I'm mean, when they say like fresh, I didn't. I was like, man, I didn't think it was going to be like that fresh when they just kill animals like that. So you said it was kind of humane and also sad. What What do you mean by humane? What does the word humane mean? I guess like you know, I wouldn't do that to like to a human. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe if we look in the dictionary, humane means compassionate or benev- benevolent. Yeah, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, no one knows that. But uh, do you think there is a compassionate way to slaughter an animal when they don't want to or need to die? Well, well, I did. Uh, I did hear about like wag, wag, wagu wagu. Uh, I did visit Japan one time. Yeah. And uh, something called wagu beef, and like they treat the animals very nice. Like uh, before they like before the. I don't want to say slaughter because, like, that sounds <laughs> it sounds very mean. But, uh, you know, they, you know, they were treated nicely. They get fed, like, almost every day. They get, like, almost like the same treatment as, like, a celebrity, you know? Do we send celebrities to slaughterhouses? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> but they get, but it's, like, sort of like they get treated like celebrities before they, uh, before they're slaughtered. Yeah, yeah. So there are some animals in the industry who are treated well. As a whole, though, you know, over 99% are factory farmed in the U.S. But let's say we have an animal and we give them a good life. Does that provide moral justification to kill them at a fraction of their lifespan? By that, I mean, let's say I have a dog, right? Let's say I gave my dog a great life for a few years. I fed him, I pet him, I cuddled him. Am I then justified to send him to a slaughterhouse because he had a few good years? I want to say that, no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, like, it is a company, and, like, they have to, you know, you know, produce, like, money and all that stuff. Yeah. So it is kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's almost, there's something in psychology called the meat paradox, which is that people love animals and care about animals, but at the same time, pay, we pay for them to go through these unspeakable things, you know, things that we don't even want to think about or talk about. So it's a societal contradiction, right? You said you like vegans. Could you ever see yourself going vegan? To be honest, like, I'm not, like, doing sports anymore. Probably. You know, like, I mean, like, it's going to be a hard change because, like, I was eating meat, like, a long time, and I can't lie, it does taste good. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, if I could, like, probably, like, stop my addiction of meat, (laughs) maybe, (laughs) then I would possibly go vegan. That's awesome to hear. And as far as the sports, there are plenty of athletes that are vegan. So even if you did want to start playing sports again, you can still get all the nutrients you need, the protein, the calcium, everything that you would need to excel as an athlete from a plant-based diet. So that wouldn't be a concern either. Uh, But that's great. I'm glad to hear that you are interested in going vegan one day. Um, You mentioned the taste and the fact that you grew up with it. I totally relate and I feel the same way. I also grew up eating these products. I never thought I would be vegan. But once I saw what was happening to the animals, I knew that I didn't want to be part of it anymore. Do you think the taste pleasure that you would get from eating these animal products, does that justify the mutilation, the confinement, 
in the slaughtering of these animals? I wouldn't, well, shit, I want to say yes, but, you know, sometimes, like, damn, I don't know about, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, I know. These are tough questions, you know? (laughs) Uh, But uh, I don't think so. I I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, if you want to make the case that, that the sensory pleasure you get from that justifies what happens to the animals, then you would have to say that basically humans can do whatever they want to animals as long as they enjoy it. And we can both see how that's morally flawed, right? Yeah. 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 What about the fact that animals eat other animals? Does that justify us eating animals? Ooh. You know, I guess... I wouldn't say yeah, either. Because, like, you know, that happens in, like, nature, too. Because, like, you know, prey and then, you know, predators. Yep. Uh, but I don't know. Like, maybe in that in that logic, yeah. Because, yeah. like, animals... Some animals already eat other animals. You know, it's in a survival instinct. Yep. So maybe, like... Because, you know, we kind of, like, evolved from animals, too. For sure. So maybe it's, like, that that instinct you know we have to like survive off of other animals just to live there was certainly a time in human history where we had to eat animals in order to get through times of food scarcity and whatnot we're no longer in that time and the reason i asked about animals eating other animals is that if you say we can do something because animals do you would have to say that we could do anything that animals do animals eat their babies they murder each other do you think it's okay for humans to commit infanticide because other animals do Definitely not. Like, right, right. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> um, the way I think about it is that we have a choice. We can choose right from wrong. We can see what's happening to these animals in slaughterhouses and say that clearly doesn't seem fair to these animals. Whereas animals in the wild, not only can they not reason like that, but they have to eat animals in order to survive. I think if a human were stuck in a survival situation and had to eat an animal, you can justify it, but that doesn't mean you can justify it when you have other options. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. What about the fact that it's culture? It's part of our culture, especially in Texas. Yeah, especially in Texas, it's a it's a huge thing. Like brisket, yep, uh, ribs, burgers, ste- definitely steak. Yep. I can't lie, I love steak. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's a huge part of like well Texas culture. And and originally I'm from Louisiana, so oh, me too. I'm from New Orleans. I was from uh, Walker. Okay. Yeah, but my, most of my family's in Louis in New Orleans too. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, certainly part of culture in New Orleans as well. Crawfish boils, yeah, crawfish, and, you yeah. know things like that. Yeah, but not much like land animals. More like you know seafood. Yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, you know, a huge cultural thing. Like yeah, I say like animals like are like a huge part of our culture. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and not only our culture here, but you look pretty much in any other country across the world, they have cultural foods that are animal-based. But do you think that justifies what we do to animals? By that, I mean, does culture change? Has there ever been anything that we used to do that we realized wasn't moral and our morality evolved along with culture? Can you think of any examples of that? I think I do. Like, uh, what was it? I think back in the day, they used to, we used to be cannibalists, I think. Cannibals? Yeah, I think, yeah, we used to be cannibals. Uh, of course, we, we definitely stopped that. Yeah. Uh, now I think about it, I don't think so. But I say, like, you know, we have evolved. Because, mm-hmm. like, now we're eating, like, you know, plant-based stuff. Like, you know, something that looks like meat almost tastes like meat, but it's not really meat. Right, yeah. But, uh, but I don't think so. I don't think we, like... You know, compared from now to back then, I don't think we kind of changed. What about, like, uh, women's rights? I mean, 100 years ago, I probably wouldn't be allowed to be on this campus, right? right. So we've certainly changed how society views women in, in the workplace and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, another example would be maybe gay rights. I know you're a lot younger than me, so you may not remember necessarily how bad things were, but I grew up uh, in a small town in Tennessee, and kids were regu- regularly beat up for being gay and it was just you know it it wasn't an okay thing to be whereas now culture is a lot more accepting of that right yeah yeah so culture does evolve along with morality um and you know there are some countries where it's cultural to eat dogs and cats and we certainly don't do that here right right 
Yeah. Uh, do you think the world would be better if we evolved away from using animals as resources? As resources. Uh, I, would, I would say yes and no. Well, well, like I said earlier, like, you know, you know, meat has like some type of like, you know, protein stuff, you know, yeah. for like diet wise. But, but yes, because like, you know, a lot of people can like, you know, steer away from that and like maybe use like, uh, like the plant-based stuff that we said, uh, said earlier. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's also, you know, tofu, tempeh, lentils, like a lot of, yeah. and plant-based meat substitutes as well. Um, do you think the world would be better for the animals if we stopped using them as resources? I would say so, yeah. Yeah, for sure. They wouldn't have to go through, you know, a lot of this, the stuff that happens in the meat and dairy industry that's standard legal practice is really just terrible for the animals. Pigs have their teeth pulled out and their tails cut off when they're babies so they don't cannibalize each other because their conditions are so bad. They're killed in gas chambers. There's a lot of just really bad stuff across the board. Um, And like you said at the beginning, you know, animals do matter. They do have feelings. They do have emotions. So what would stop you from going vegan? What stop me from going vegan? Yeah. Ooh, I guess like, you know, just loving meat too much. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we agreed earlier that that doesn't justify what happens to the animals. Yeah. Yeah. But also, uh, probably like if I look more deep into like, you know, what they're actually like doing into two animals, I'll probably stop. Yeah. And I'd love to give you some resources because I think you're a hundred percent right that that's kind of the key to this is once you really connect with the animals, you don't see them in the same way. Like I used to look at a piece of bacon and think, Oh, yummy bacon. But now when I look at bacon, I remember the slaughterhouses I've been to. I see the pigs before they go into slaughter. I can hear their screams and it's, it, it makes you not want it. So you don't necessarily need the discipline to kind of get past your craving because you don't have the craving in the first place. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So if I gave you some resources, would you be happy to, to look into what happens to the animals? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Do you have any other questions for me or any reasons that you could morally justify what we do to animals or anything like that? Uh, I think I do. I have one question. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, for animals, like, what happens if, like, it is not like an attack or anything like that? Yeah. So what if, like, you know, the animals, like, start to, like, overpopulate and all that stuff? Sure. That's a great question. Obviously, we don't want billions of cows, you know, just wandering around, right? Right. But why do these animals exist in the first place? Of course, not just for us to eat, but, uh, you know, I guess, like, some resources, like, like milk and uh, something else. I have no clue. Basically, they exist because there's a demand for it, right? There's a demand for meat, for milk, for leather. And because of that, the farmers breed these animals into existence. So they're not naturally bred. It's mostly via artificial insemination. So the reason we have billions of animals is because people are paying... Like, when you pay for an animal product, you're signaling to the slaughterhouse and the farmers, I want more of these animals to exist, so then they breed more. So as people go vegan, the demand will be lowered, and they won't breed as many animals into existence in the first place. This has already happened in Germany. So many people have gone vegan in the last 5, 10 years that 10% fewer animals were bred into existence in the first place. So we wouldn't have overpopulation. We already have overpopulation. You know, there's 100 billion chickens on Earth right now. Um, So it would just lower along with demand. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? No, that'll be it. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciated this. And yeah, I'm happy to give you some resources as well. Thanks for watching. If you want to help us ban slaughter in Denver, please donate to Pro Animal Future.